Let's see how to find the node with a given key in a binary tree. Here we have a simple binary tree. And let's say we wanted to find the node with key 4. So what we would need to do, we would need to find this node and return it. Note that we're talking about a generic binary tree, which is not necessarily a binary search tree. So how would we actually go about finding the node with key 4? The idea is to start at the root node and check if the key of the root node is equal to the key that we're looking for, then we just return it. Otherwise, we first try to find the node with key 4 in the left subtree, and if we find it, we return it. Else, we try to find it in the right subtree, and if we find it, we return it. Otherwise, we just return null to indicate that there is no node with key 4 in this tree. Let's actually demonstrate how this works. So we start at root. 3 is not equal to 4, so we will try to find 4 in the left subtree. 7 is not equal to 4, so we'll go to the left. 2 is not equal to 4, we'll go to the left, but there is no left, and we'll go to the right, but there is no right. So 2 would return null to indicate that there is no 4. Now 7 would go to the right, and this time the key of root is 4, which is equal to the key we're looking for, so we just return this node. Let's say that we were looking for a key which is not present in the tree. For example, 8. So we again start at 3. 3 is not equal to 8, so we move to the left. 7 is not equal to 8, so we move to the left. 2 is not equal to 8, and 2 doesn't have a left nor a right, so 2 returns null. And we move to the right of 7. 4 is not equal to 8, and 4 doesn't have no left nor right, so it returns null. So then the left of Three returns null, so we would go to the right of 3. 1 is not equal to 8. 1 doesn't have a left, so we would go to the right. 6 is not equal to 8, so we go to the left. 5 is not equal to 8, so we go to the left of 5, but there is no left, and we go to the right, there is no right. So 5 returns null, and 6 goes to the right, but there is no right. So 6 returns null, and then 1 returns null, and 3 returns null. So we would just return null to indicate that there is no node with key 8 in this binary tree. Let's see how to implement this. We have a function called findNode which takes the root of the binary tree and the key that we want to find and returns the node that has that key or null if there is no node with such a key. The first thing we want to do is check if root is null because if root is null the tree is empty. So we just want to return null, indicating that we have no node with such a key. If root is not null, we check is key of root equal to the key we're looking for. And if that's the case, we found the node we were looking for, so we just return it. But if the key of root is not equal to the key we're looking for, then we first want to check, can we find the key in the left subtree? And we check if found is different from null, so if we actually found the node in the left subtree, we just return it. But if we got a null, then we want to try to find the node in the right subtree. Now, if we find the node in the right subtree, we just want to return it. Otherwise, we want to return null, indicating that there is no node with such a key. So what we could do, we could directly return the result of calling find node, passing in root right, and that's the whole function. Let's run through some examples to see this function in action. Here we have the same binary tree we've seen before, and let's say we want to find key 4. So we'd call our function findNode, passing in the root of the tree 3 and key 4. 
So note that even though I'm writing that root is equal to 3, what I really mean is that root is pointing to the node with key 3. So we check is root null, root is not null. Is root key equal to key 3 is not equal to 4. So we would call our function recursively passing in the left of 3, which is 7. Root is not null. 7 is not equal to 4. So we go to the left of 7, which is 2. Root is not null. 2 is not equal to 4. We go to the left of 2, which is null. So we hit the base case and return null. So the left of 2 returns null. So found is set to null, and because found is null, we do not return it. We now go to the right of 2, which is again null. So we hit the space case and return null. So this is null for the 2. So 2 just returns null, and 2 is the left of 7. Once the left of 7 returns null, we set found to null, so we do not return found. We go to the right of 7, which is 4. It's not null. Root key is 4, which is equal to 4. So we found the node that we were looking for, so we just return it. And 4 is the right of 7. So the right of 7 gets the 4. So once the right of 7 gets the 4, it returns it. And the 7 is the left of 3. So the left of 3 gets a 4. Once this is 4 for the 3, found is set to 4. And because found is different from null, we return found, which is the 4. So the final output is the node with key 4. Let's say we now want to find key 8. We call our function passing in root 3 and key 8. Root is not null. 3 is not equal to 8. So we go to the left of 3, which is 7. Root is not null, 7 is not equal to 8, so we go to the left of 7, which is 2. Root is not null, 2 is not equal to 8, so we go to the left of 2, which is null. So we hit the base case and return null, so this is null for the 2. Found is set to null, so we do not return it. Now we go to the right of 2, which again is null, so we get null back and 2 returns null. So 7 gets null from the left. We found it set to null, we do not return it. Now 7 goes to the right. The right of 7 is 4. Root is not null, 4 is not equal to 8. We go to the left of 4, which is null. So we get null back. So we do not return found. We now go to the right of 4, which again is null, so it gets back a null. So 4 returns null, and 4 is the right of 7. Once the right of 7 returns null, it returns null. And 7 is the left of 3, so the left of 3 is null. So found is set to null, we do not return it. We now go to the right of 3 which is 1. So we call our function with root 1. It's not null. 1 is not equal to 8. We go to the left of 1, which is null. So we hit the base case, we get null back. Found is set to null, so we do not return it. We go to the right of 1, which is 6. It's not null. 6 is not equal to 8. We go to the left of 6, which is 5. It's not null. 5 is not equal to 8. We go to the left of 5, which is null, so we get null. We do not return found. Go to the right of 5, which is null, so we again get null. And 5 returns null. And 5 is the left of 6. Once the left of 6 is null, we do not return found. And we go to the right of 6. The right of 6 is null, so we get back null. Once we get null for the right of 6, 6 returns null, and 6 is the right of 1, so the right of 1 is null. 
once the right of 1 is null, it returns null, and 1 is the right of 3. So the right of 3 gets null. And once the right of 3 gets null, 3 returns null. So the final output would be null, indicating that there is no node with key 8 in this binary tree. Let's analyze the time complexity of this function. In the worst case, the key that we're looking for is not in the tree. So we will end up checking the key of every node without actually finding the key that we're looking for. This means that we will end up doing this check for every single node, so n times. And because every single time we end up here, we then end up going to the left and then going to the right, this means that every single of those n times there will be two recursive calls. So the total number of calls will be 2n. N of those calls are the ones where we end up here comparing the key of the node to the key that we're looking for and doing a constant amount of work, so giving a total of all of n work. And the remaining n calls are the ones where we do not end up here, instead we exit here hitting the base case. So that's again a constant amount of work done n times, so that's all of n in total. So the time complexity will therefore be all of n plus all of n, which is just all of n. Let's analyze the space complexity of this function. Because this is a function that calls itself recursively, the space complexity will depend on how big will the call stack grow. With every recursive call, we either move to the left or to the right. That is, we go one level deeper in the tree. And these functions start to return once we encounter a leaf node. The maximum number of functions will occur when we follow the longest path from the root node to leaf node, and their number will be equal, therefore, to the height of the tree. So the space complexity is all h, where h is the height of the tree. You can find the link to the code in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.